Last week, I moved all of my bees to a new location and closed the chapter on my previous life to pretty much start all over. In all honesty, October is the worst time to move bees in Michigan as the winter draws near. So I have been going through all 33 of my colonies to check and make sure that no queens were pinched in the move and to see what has to be done in order to prep for winter. If you recall, I have a hive that I named Lucy that is tested at 60 plus mites in a wash both before and after an Apivar treatment. And I found symptoms of deformed wing virus in another hive that I had also treated with Apivar. I have four other colonies that I had treated late this summer, so it's a perfect time to see how they're doing. Let the next chapter of the Beef at Bee Yard begin. Well, I'm sorry I had to just cut it yesterday, but in all honesty, I was feeling really frustrated after those hives I had gone through. So I just need to take a minute and go home, take a break, think about everything and decide on a plan from there. So I was talking with a, another beekeeper and he kind of changed my perspective on everything. He had said that you need to look at bees not as your pets, but as livestock, as many of you guys have said. When farmers have a sick animal, they don't let it live in just for the risk that it could possibly infect other, other animals on the farm and cause a whole entire ordeal that could cost the whole entire farm. So he said I need to look at bees the same way. So he actually suggested that maybe I should euthanize that colony. So I didn't catch it on video. Maybe I should go through it again so I can show you guys. But when I was in that hive, I saw at least 15 nurse bees that were in fact infected with deformed wing virus. Um, the mite load was really high. Like I said, I threw, I threw on Formic just to see what would happen. The only reason that the mite load even got out of hand, out of hand to begin with is because the Apivar strips that I put in there do not work at all. And this is one of the commercial strains that I got and they don't have any resistance to Varroa at all. So I'm a little nervous to see how my other colonies that I'd put Apivar in, how they're doing. Um, there were five colonies in total that I put Apivar in, but clearly Apivar does not work at all. So yeah. So I'm gonna go into this colony one more time and I'm gonna show you guys what I was seeing, how many bees with deformed wing virus I was seeing, and I want your guys' opinion. Do you think I should euthanize this colony? Or should I leave the treatment on there and just see what happens and hope that they somehow make it through? My only thing with letting them do that is I'm just concerned that they're going to spread it to my other colonies because of drift. And if they were to abscond and go into any of my other colonies, they're going to infect those colonies with deformed wing virus as well. Now, some of my genetics might be able to handle deformed wing virus a little bit better than others. Um, so, I don't know. It's a big risk. I'm happy to hear everybody's opinion. Um, so, yeah, please drop in the comments what you think will be the best decision. Okay, so actually, I just remembered that I put formic strips on there. So, actually, it's not a good idea to open up the colony when you're treating it. It could um, impact the effectiveness of the treatment. So I'm not going to be able to show you guys what I was seeing. So you're just going to have to trust me on that. But they had, let's see, that was hive number 17, I believe. I will tell you how many mites I found in that wash just to refresh your memory. Yeah, so I had found 50 plus mites in a wash. I couldn't count them all. There were so many. So lots of deformed wing virus. So that just gives you a little bit of a backstory. Um, so yeah. Let me know your opinion. I'd love to hear it. I think I need new shoes. <laughs> you think? Oh, these are looking pretty beat up. Yeah, I definitely need new boots. <laughs> okay, so let's just get right into it. I'm still going through all my colonies, making sure one, 
that there's a queen or I see eggs in there just to make sure that um, none of the queens got killed or crushed in the big move. And I'm gonna be seeing what their food stores are looking like so that, oh shoot, I forgot that sugar water. Of course I did. Mm. <laughs> but I'm gonna be seeing how much food they have and condensing down based off of that for the winter time. Um, I'm gonna be overwintering in a lot of just single deeps. This will be my first winter overwintering in single deeps, so it will be interesting for sure. So let's start digging. Okay, so last time I checked on this colony, it looked like they had a virgin queen because for some reason they requeened. Um, and I haven't checked on it since. So, yeah. <laughs> so one thing that I noticed in a lot of my colonies, well, at least some of my colonies, not a lot of them, but have you ever just looked at your bees and you notice that they appear smaller than some of your other bees? This is one of those colonies where these bees are definitely smaller in size. Now, I don't know if that's just because of age or if maybe it's because of the genetic. Because actually, fun fact, we have bred our bees to be bigger than they normally are. So, yeah, that also might be a reason why Varroa is so bad when it comes to our Western honeybees. Um, that is something that, shoot, what's his name? Uh, Michael Bush talks about. Um, so, yeah. Because some of my colonies, the bees look abnormally long compared to these. It's probably hard for you to tell on camera, but these bees are definitely smaller than some of my other ones. Hmm. Of course I forgot my measuring cup. <laughs> well, oh wait. I guess I left it. <laughs> that actually works out perfect. Okay, let's do a mite wash. Oh man. These commercial strains, man, not doing good. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Thirty-three. Yikes. It's just showing how quickly Varroa can build up in these commercial strains. That is why I say usually in August and September, if I'm seeing my mite load is at five mites in a wash, I know that's gonna double, maybe triple or quadruple if it's in a commercial strain hive. So it's wise a treat, especially going into winter. So I guess I'll add more formic. Mm. Hopefully I have enough for all my colonies. Okay, that's always really strong when I open the bag. Just a warning, do not inhale it. <laughs> Front, one in the back, and oh, yep, they definitely don't like that. <coughs> oh. oh no, don't inhale. Oh, they say you should wear a mask when using this stuff, so do not do as I do. <laughs> because I'm finding so many colonies with such a high mite load, I think I'm actually going to test all of these colonies going forward. Even though they, even if they had a low mite load a month ago when I checked on them, just to play it safe. So, yeah. Hive number 11, hive number 11 coming right up. This is why you always want to really check on your frames because if I would have tested this colony or this frame, I would have probably killed her. And that's not good. See, I can't even find her. <laughs> oh, there she is. See how tiny she is? She blends in so well. She's a brown one. Still more mites than I'd like to see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yeah, that's more than I'd like to see. It looks like I'm going to have to get more treatment. <laughs> so this one should be a better situation. This is one of my original colonies that has had zero mites in every single wash I've done with them this year. So, let's hope that it's still the same. I can definitely tell this colony is doing good because the, uh, the bee populations are really high. So, I'm gonna guess that the mite load is probably still pretty low, but since I keep finding so many mites, I am gonna do a test because it's good to know. 
Oh, they got more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what I'm noticing is it's apparent that the mite bomb thing is actually a thing. So I've read research saying that it doesn't really matter if one colony has a really, a really large mite load, um, that it's not going to affect your other colonies. But, and at first I was like, hey, all my other colonies are pretty low and I only have this one hive that's super high with that 60 plus hive Lucy. But as you're seeing, I have a lot of mites in a lot of these colonies. Um, so yeah, it looks like they, the mite bomb thing actually is a thing. So yeah. <laughs> All right, now on to the next. This is one of the colonies that I treated with Apivar, so this might be a uh, frustrating sight. I guess we're about to find out. That is a lot of mites. Oh. Okay, so since I do have a, looks like a mite bomb going on in my entire apiary, the real test is gonna be this next colony. This is one of my Saskatraz breeds. This is one of them that has been managing Varroa pretty well all year. They've gone from one to only four um, in the mite washes that I've done this year. So, yeah, we'll see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fourteen. Yep, the mite bomb thing is actually a thing, guys. <laughs> So for those who don't know what the mite bomb is, the theory is that if you have one colony that has a really high mite load, that you should treat all of your hives because what's going to happen is you're going to get drift between the colonies and they're going to transfer mites from colony to colony, but also they're going to be transferring mites onto the flower heads and all of the nectar sources, pollen sources that they're going to. So you're going to be spreading them amongst all of your hives. So, yeah. Think of like a flower, think of a flower head as if it was like a dinner plate. And if everyone was to go to that dinner plate and say one person was sick and they had the flu, another person maybe had COVID or something, and all these people came to this dinner plate and they all shared this plate of food. Well, when they're touching the food and doing things, that virus is going to go into the other food, whether they like touch their mouth or you know how it goes. The same thing goes with flower heads with bees. They go to this dinner plate and all these mites jump off of them onto the flower head so then the next bee comes along and jumps onto that mite and goes back to their colony so that they can breed. That's what makes mites so terrible and that's why we all hate them so much because they're smart. But yeah, so it looks like I'm going to be treating all of these colonies. Um, the temps are going to be getting pretty cold, so I'm probably going to do want to do OA because even it's kind of pushing it, even using Formic right now. And I already just used my last strip of Formic, um, and it's kind of pricey too. So yeah, I'm going to be treating them soon. And I know, like I keep telling you guys, I am going treatment free. But the key with that is to have the genetics. I'm bringing in a couple breeder queens in the spring. So right now, the most important thing for me going forward is to have numbers and to pretty much have stock. So I need to have colonies I can just drop queens in this spring. Um, my goal is to be able to expand immediately to 100 hives in the spring market right now on the freaking goals list. That is my goal for the springtime. Um, so... Yeah, I need a lot of these colonies to make it because I'm going to need a good amount in order to make so many splits and whatnot. So, yeah. Ugh. Once again, like I keep saying, stop buying commercial strains. <laughs> because what happens is they are terrible when it comes to mites and they cannot manage them. And when there's one colony in your whole entire apiary that can't manage mites, it affects the rest of them. Now, this other colony might be able to prevent them from reproducing. I'm not doing VSH testing or anything like that to see if they are. Oh my gosh, there's a mite on my phone. Uh, 
Oh There's a mite crawling around on my phone screen right now. Oh no. Heck no. You can't really see it, but it's right there. I squished it. And it's dead now. <laughs> That's how many mites are, go are going around right now. But yeah, so they might be managing varroa on their own in these stronger colonies, my Saskatraz breeds and um, my original colonies with local genetics. But again, I don't really know that unless I take the time to pull out frames and go through them all. And I am not about to do that to be completely honest. So yeah, no more commercial strains from here on out. That is my vow. Okay, we've got 21 in that wash. It went from one to 21 in one month. So again, mite bombs actually are a thing. I hate to see that. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Okay, my next colony that I'm looking at is hive number eight, or AKA Lucy. So I did treat her with Formic um, about 14 days ago. So, actually 15 days ago. So actually this is a perfect time. I can take the strips off and see if it actually worked. Oh man. Cool, we're gonna see a lot of good things in this video. Now we get to see whether or not Formic, how effective Formic is when you have a mite load above 60 per mites, or 60 mites in a wash, so. This is what I'm seeing when I open up this hive. See how little bees there are? This is also gonna have to be condensed down into a nuke. That is, if they're actually surviving. Oh man. You see all those little specks? That is a lot of dead mites on the bottom board. There's probably hundreds of mites on that bottom board. Okay, I guess I didn't abscond because there are eggs in these cells. Um, this is the box that was above it. Usually they don't keep the bottom box empty and then start filling the top box. So it's interesting that they chose to do this. But... I wanted to show you. All right, so you see how there's a lot of bald brood on this one? And um, I had it flipped over, so that's why these are all popped at the top. But notice how they're chewed down. This is telling me that the mite load is definitely going to be high in this colony. Um, and also the virus levels are probably going to be high because they chewed down that brood. They ate the heads off of it. Yep, another wash with probably at least 60 mites. There's no point in me even counting them all. Woo! Yeah. It's insane how quickly a hive can go from looking super good and super strong to looking like it's failing. That is the worst part about Varroa and the colony collapse disorder that it causes. So it looks like it's going to be a rough winter. So send out some prayers for me that these colonies hopefully start doing a little bit better. Um, I'm going to keep on my feeding regimen um, very heavily so that they can bulk up for the winter and have enough stores and I'm, gonna, I'm definitely going to look into getting some form of OA treatment on these hives soon. So I'm going to be looking into probably looking for a vaporizer. Um, I would do the drip method but considering I have so many colonies I'm looking for something that's fast. Um, I don't really have time to sit there and drip an OA solution onto every single frame. That's kind of a lot. So yeah, I guess that's it for me today. Um, as always, thanks for following along and I will see you guys soon. Oh, and don't forget, please let me know your opinion on whether or not I should euthanize that colony that has really bad deforming virus. I want to know your opinion. So please let me know. Bye.